Section 1. The Dopamine Drip Your brain doesn't release its biggest hit of dopamine when you make the shot. It releases it in the moments before, when you're standing over the ball, when anything is still possible, when you're about to pull the trigger. This is the hidden mechanism that makes golf neurologically addictive, and it's the same pattern that keeps people glued to slot machines for hours. Dopamine isn't just the pleasure chemical. It's primarily involved in motivation and reward prediction. And neuroscience has proven that your brain releases more of it during the anticipation of a reward than when you actually receive the reward. The walk from your cart to the ball, the practice swings, the moment you address the ball and visualize the shot, this entire ritual is flooding your brain with dopamine. You're getting high on possibility, not results. Here's where it gets devious. Golf operates on what behavioral psychologists call a variable ratio reinforcement schedule. B.F. Skinner began studying this pattern in the 1930s and demonstrated through the 1950s that it produces the highest response rates and most persistent behavior of any reinforcement pattern known to science. You don't get rewarded every time you perform the behavior. The rewards are unpredictable and intermittent. A slot machine pays out randomly. A golf swing produces a perfect shot randomly and your brain cannot resist this pattern. Tour professionals hit roughly eight to 12 shots per round that feel perfectly struck. For amateur golfers, that number drops to just a few per 18 holes. You're playing a four hour round with 80 to 100 swings and only a handful will feel exactly right. But every single swing before those perfect ones is pumping anticipatory dopamine into your system. Every address of the ball is another pull of the lever. Every setup is another bet that this might be the one. This is why you can hit 95 mediocre shots and still walk off the course thinking about the handful of good ones. Your brain isn't remembering the round accurately, it's remembering the dopamine hits. Section 2. The Near Miss Hijack That putt that stopped one inch from the hole? That drive that landed two feet into the rough? Your brain didn't process those as failures. It processed them as wins that were stolen from you, and that changes everything. Neuroscientists call this the near-miss effect, and it's one of the most powerful psychological traps in human behavior. When you experience a near-miss in golf, a ball that lips out of the cup, a shot that just catches the edge of a bunker, a drive that misses the fairway by inches, FMRI studies, including research by Clark and colleagues published in 2009, show that your brain's ventral striatum and insula light up. These are the exact same regions that activate when you actually succeed. Your brain is treating an objective failure as if it were a win that got away. This creates cognitive dissonance. You did everything right, your setup was perfect, your swing felt pure, the ball was tracking exactly where you aimed, and then it didn't go in. Your brain can't reconcile this. It interprets the near miss as evidence that you're close to mastery, that success is just one more attempt away. So it floods you with motivation to try again immediately. Here's why this matters. Research shows that near misses are more memorable than actual successes. Your brain prioritizes experiences that are surprising or difficult to explain. A routine par is forgotten by the next hole. But that birdie putt that caught the edge and spun out, you'll replay that shot in your mind for days. You'll think about it at work. You'll visualize what you should have done differently. And you'll feel an urgent, almost physical need to get back to the course and correct it. This is why bad rounds haunt you more than good rounds satisfy you. Your brain isn't keeping an accurate scorecard. It's cataloging stolen victories and demanding you return to claim them. And while your brain is locked in this cycle of chasing stolen wins, something remarkable happens to your consciousness. If you are loving this video, please click the hype button on your mobile screen and help us to reach out to more golf fans. Done? Let's continue. Section 3. The Consciousness Hack There's a reason 4 hours on a golf course feels like 20 minutes. Activity in parts of your brain's prefrontal cortex, the region that judges you, criticizes you, makes you anxious, decreases significantly during intense focus. Golf doesn't just distract you from stress, it neurologically quiets it. Neuroscientists call this transient hypofrontality. During intense focus on a golf shot, the prefrontal cortex, responsible for self-awareness, time perception, and executive function, shows measurably reduced activity on brain scans. This is the part of your brain that worries about your job, replays embarrassing moments from 10 years ago, and tells you you're not good enough, and golf quiets it down. This creates what psychologists call the flow state. When you're standing over a putt, reading the break, visualizing the line, your brain shifts from explicit executive control to automatic, implicit processing. You're not thinking about putting, you're just putting. Time distorts. 
the world narrows to a single point of focus, and your brain experiences increased coordination of neurochemicals including dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, anandamide, and endorphins. Anandamide is particularly interesting. It's called the bliss molecule. It's an endocannabinoid that binds to the same receptors as THC, contributing to calm focus and mild euphoria. Your brain produces it naturally during flow states. This is why golfers describe the zone as almost meditative or transcendent. You're not exaggerating. You're experiencing a chemically influenced altered state of consciousness. This is one of the rarest and most valuable mental states available to humans. Modern life almost never provides it. You can't achieve flow while scrolling your phone or sitting in a meeting, but you can achieve it on a golf course. Section 4. The Primal Trap A golf course isn't just beautiful. It's a near-perfect replica of the African savanna, the exact landscape your ancestors spent hundreds of thousands of years evolving to recognize as ideal habitat. Wide open grassland, scattered trees, water sources, your DNA sees this and recognizes safety, abundance, home. Biologist E. O. Wilson called this the biophilia hypothesis. Humans have an innate tendency to seek connections with nature and living systems. It's hardwired into our biology. And the savanna hypothesis takes this further. Research shows that humans across all cultures instinctively prefer landscapes with specific characteristics. Open spaces that allow you to see approaching threats scattered trees that provide shelter and vantage points, visible water sources that signal survival. These are the exact features that kept our ancestors alive for hundreds of thousands of years. Golf course architects naturally align with these preferences. Every championship course features rolling fairways that mimic grasslands. Strategic tree placement provides visual interest and perceived safety. Water hazards aren't just obstacles, they're psychological anchors that make your nervous system recognize the environment as resource-rich and desirable. And this has measurable effects on your body. Research by Tuhig Bennett and Jones published in 2018 analyzed data from multiple studies and found that exposure to green spaces significantly reduces cortisol, the stress hormone, and lowers heart rate and blood pressure. Your body physically relaxes in these spaces. Environmental psychologists call this the restorative effect. Natural landscapes don't just look good, they actively repair your mental state. This is why you feel different the moment you step onto a golf course. Your brain is responding to deep evolutionary programming, and it wants to stay there. And while you're standing in this engineered paradise, your body is being rewired at the cellular level. If you are loving this video, subscribe to our channel and help us reach 5,000 subs by month's end. Section 5. The Physical Imprint Every pure strike you've ever felt, that perfect compression, that effortless sound, has carved a neural pathway in your brain. Your nervous system has a blueprint of that feeling, and it will spend the rest of your life trying to trace it again. This is motor learning at the cellular level. When you practice a golf swing consistently over time, your brain doesn't just remember the movement, it physically rewires itself. The process is called myelination. With repeated practice, your brain wraps the neural pathways involved in that motion with a fatty substance called myelin. But here's what makes golf uniquely addictive. The sensory feedback from a perfectly struck shot is extraordinarily specific. Proprioception is your body's sense of position and movement in space. When you hit a pure 7 iron, when the club compresses the ball exactly right, when the divot starts just after impact, when the sound is crisp and clean, your proprioceptive system sends a flood of precise feedback to your brain. This feeling is so distinct and so pleasurable that your nervous system creates a detailed sensory memory of it. Your basal ganglia, the brain region responsible for habit formation, takes this information and builds automatic patterns. Through repeated practice, the movement transitions from something you consciously think about to something your body just does. Colloquially called muscle memory, but the adaptation actually resides in neural circuits. Your motor cortex, cerebellum, and basal ganglia have physically reorganized themselves around this skill. And once these neural pathways are built, they're remarkably persistent. You can take years off from golf, and when you come back, the fundamental swing pattern is still there. Though performance may need refinement, the brain has stored the blueprint. And every time you step onto a course, your nervous system is trying to recreate that perfect sensory experience. So you've got the chemical drip, the stolen winds, the consciousness hack, the primal paradise, and the physical rewiring. But there's one final reason you'll never escape. Section 6 the perfect storm. Golf isn't addictive because of one mechanism. 
it's addictive because it's one of the most behaviorally reinforcing recreational activities ever studied, where multiple addiction mechanisms fire simultaneously. And once you've invested hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars, your brain won't let you admit it might not be worth it. In addiction science, the most powerful behavioral patterns occur when multiple reinforcement mechanisms work together. Positive reinforcement from the dopamine hits. Negative reinforcement from the frustration of near misses that demands correction. The flow state that provides psychological escape. The environmental restoration that calms your nervous system. The physical rewiring that makes the skill persistent. All of these systems are operating at once, each one amplifying the others. And then there's the social component. A typical round of golf takes four to five hours. You're spending that entire time with the same group of people, walking together, talking between shots, sharing the experience. Research on prolonged positive social interaction suggests this likely increases oxytocin, the bonding hormone, which strengthens emotional connections and creates feelings of belonging. This is why business deals happen on golf courses. This is why friendships formed through golf feel different. You're not just playing a game together. You're undergoing a shared bonding experience. Now add the sunk cost fallacy. The average golfer spends around $2,000 to $2,500 per year on the sport, according to industry data. Equipment, green fees, balls, apparel. A new driver can cost $500 to $600. A full set of clubs ranges from $800 to $2,000 or more. You've invested this money. You've invested hundreds of hours practicing and playing and your brain is wired to avoid admitting that investment was wasted. This is escalation of commitment. The more you invest, the harder it becomes to walk away, even if you're not improving or even enjoying it as much as you used to. Your brain has been chemically conditioned to crave the anticipation. It's been tricked into seeing failures as stolen victories. It's experienced a rare state of consciousness that modern life almost never provides. It's been placed in an environment that your evolutionary history recognizes as ideal. It's been physically rewired at the neural level. It's bonded with other people through prolonged social interaction, and it's psychologically trapped by the resources you've already committed. This isn't one addiction, it's six addictions wrapped into a single four-hour experience, and your brain never stood a chance. So the next time someone asks why you're obsessed with a game where you hit a ball into a hole, you can tell them the truth. It's not about the score, it's about the dopamine drip, the near-miss hijack, the consciousness hack, the primal trap, the physical imprint and the perfect storm of neurological and psychological mechanisms that make golf one of the most behaviorally reinforcing activities ever studied. Your brain was built to crave this, and now keep enjoying our next video here.